In this video, I'm continuing my No Armor Honor Mode Divinity run. If you haven't seen it, check out the first video with the link in the description to see how we got here. Let's get started. I have one last fight to conquer before I board the Lady Vengeance, and that's Captain Sek Zabber. He's an undead captain with a fancy set of armor that I'm not allowed to wear, and therefore had no interest in killing. But I should probably take him and his crew out to at least gain experience from the battle. This fight's main difficulty is the fact that my enemies will try to use the charm status effect to turn my party against each other. And with no armor, I have zero defense against this other than simply avoiding getting hit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a game of teleportation hot potato. But first, I'm going to make one quick adjustment to the battlefield. I don't know who put this beautiful roll of carpet in the corner here, but fancy carpet like this deserves to be out in the open. I can't unroll it, but I can at least put it here in front of the door so Captain Sek Zapper will have to notice it. I walked up to Captain Sek Zapper to talk about the carpet situation, but he just wanted to fight instead. Rise, crew. End this! He summoned his crew, and the fight was officially on. The captain's chief mate tried to use mutiny to charm Fane to join their side, but Fane was already gone, teleported to safety by the Red Prince. Then. Losa teleported the Red Prince to safety with plenty of time to spare before the Love Grenade would have charmed him. And Sabeel completed our game of teleportation hot potato by teleporting Losa to safety. I guess the captain really hates that carpet, because instead of just rolling it out, he and his crew would rather stand around making idle threats. After giving them a chance to do the right thing and roll out the carpet, it was clear the carpet meant nothing to them, so I had no choice but to sentence them all to death for crimes against carpet. I teleported them one by one and executed them. And you know, it didn't have to be like this. I'm not a monster. Treat the Reaper for me. Just a really big fan of interior design. Also, who needs an army when you have a roll of carpet and some teleportation magic? After taking out the captain, I boarded the Lady Vengeance and made my way to where I thought there would be two geists waiting for me. But it turns out the geists in this room are the same ones that I killed at the beginning of my first video, so the room was empty. I know it's a little thing, but I really appreciate the attention to detail the developers put into this game. With nothing to fight on board, I set sail in search of adventure, and it wasn't long before I found some. Dallas ambushed us in the open seas, and right at the beginning of the fight, pretty much all of our allies get wiped out by a single spell. Normally, an ambush like this would be really dangerous with no armor, but there's an extremely exploitable feature in this fight. The staircase next to Malady still works normally. You can use it to go below deck, and when you do, it takes your character out of combat, allowing your spell cooldowns to refresh, and you can heal. But even more importantly, you can exploit literally any staircase or ladder in Divinity to get infinite turns. In truth, I should have saved this exploit for some other time in the run, but I kind of just wanted to use it uh, to slaughter a bunch of Dallas soldiers in front of her. What I really should have done for this fight is use Fane's Time Warp ability on Malady to give her an extra turn, then pop below deck, consume a soul jar to get a source point back, and time warp her again on the next turn. This would wrap up the fight extremely quickly. Hold them off. I need more time. Don't stop. It's working. I need more time. Almost there. A little longer. Damn. But, oh well. I'm burning this infinite turn method that exploits stairs and ladders, and now I can't use it again. To make the fight a little more fun, I took the Magic Cycles talent for all my characters, which increases the power of fire and water spells for one round, then earth and air spells the next. I teleported all my enemies to the same place and blasted them with whichever spell cycle was empowered for each of my characters. Alright, we have everybody grouped up right here in a nice little huddle, and I'm just going to start hitting them with as many AoE spells as I can. They're not going to be able to do anything, they're not going to move, they're not going to take any turns, they're not going to attack, because all I have to do is just hop below deck before any of my character's turns ends, bring a different character up who has all their spells ready to go, and 
just keep casting. As long as I have, I mean, really just one character above deck at any given time, the combat can't advance at all. So I can just keep cycling my characters below deck, exploding them with fire and ice and electricity, and then just use my last action points to hop back down, bring a character whose cooldowns are ready back up. The reason I decided to add magic cycles to this is because I felt like it would be a little bit boring if I was just using the same old spells every time. So I've never used magic cycles before because it seems a little odd, but it sounded like fun. It sounded like it would be a good time to just cast the spells that are empowered. Uh, I wish that it gave a little bit more points to the ability when it was in that cycle because that would feel a lot more impactful. But um, I think it just gives two, two points. So you do what, like 10% more damage, but it was still fun. I enjoyed myself. We're gonna start actually killing them now. One of them just died from that spell and we have a whole bunch at half helm almost dead now and they are just dropping and it's obviously completely unfair. They can't fight back. I was planning on teleporting Dallas and her friend into the fight and doing the same to them, but unfortunately when I finished off her troops, the fight came to an end, so I won't get to humiliate her this time. Now that I've arrived in Driftwood, I decided I wanted to take on the scariest fight first. The scariest fight, of course, is against the Scarecrows. The Terrify aura that the Undead Scarecrow puts out disables any character that doesn't have magical armor, which is all of my characters. Just gonna talk to this Scarecrow, what could possibly go wrong? All right, I'm gonna put Living on the Edge on Losa because she's, she's definitely gonna die because she's gonna be terrified and I'm gonna get a cheap shot in with Sabeel and see if I can bust that mad physical armor right now. What is happening? He didn't take any damage? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, this has started off so poorly. He, d I can't hit him when he's in conversation. Okay. Uh, hopefully, I can revive Sabeel without getting into combat. Okay, that's good. Man, that thing one hit me. All right, Losa, just hang in there. I'm gonna try and find some way to keep you alive. That's fine. I didn't need that source point anyways. Yeah. There she goes, running, running terrified, can't control her at all, and it's probably going to be the last of her health. There it goes, the only thing keeping her up now is living on the edge from the resist death. Okay, I'm going to try to summon my cat right at the end of the round to catch it, and I summoned it in the terrify aura. No, <laughs> why did I do that? I summoned it in the terrify aura. Oh, I'm so bad at this game. That was the stupidest place to summon that cat. Uh, that definitely is going to get Losa killed. Because she's going to lose her turn right now. And Resist Death is going to expire. There it goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, she, I think she had Comeback Kid and now she's done. <laughs> oh, this is off to such a bad start already. Oh my gosh. This is going to be rough. All right, I have the Red Prince fully specced as a summoner, and I'm going to restart this fight. Losa is still laying dead in the field, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. And so I'm going to run the Incarnate in to start the fight, and it has magical armor, so hopefully it's going to survive long enough to take a turn, and I will figure out something to do from there. I'm so scared of that Scarecrow. That Terrify Aura is the worst. Okay, the Incarnate gets a turn. I'm gonna get Sabeel in position. I'm gonna hit it with a Sky Shot because all I need to do, all I need to do is I need to break his physical armor. And if I break his physical armor, I win. That's it. Big damage, big damage. He's moving around so much, I'm scared to click, but okay. No, he has 11 armor left. I need it broken. Luckily, they all ignored Sabeel. So she lived, Chameleon Cloaker, Get her out of the way. I jumped into the Terrify Aura. Why do I keep putting things in the Terrify Aura? Okay, he moved away. He moved away from Sabeel, at least. Sabeel has a chance. The Incarnate is terrified now, but Sabeel isn't anymore. And they've moved so far away from Losa, so I'll be able to get Losa back up. Feeling less terrified for the loss of my save file. So I was being really stubborn, and I didn't want to use magical armor. I didn't want to use armor or frost, but that terrify aura is so much bigger, so much wider of an area than I expected, and 
I'm just, I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm going to stop being stubborn. I'm going to use Armor of Frost like a responsible adult to make sure that I do not get terrified and murdered. What? No! Stop it! Stop running people into the terrify or stop! I feel like I'm losing my mind. She's in sneak mode, so she's not even in the combat, but she's not running away for some reason, even though she's terrified. She's just gonna stand there. I can't do anything with her. That's fine. We have the we have the the new and improved incarnate champion over here to finish off that last 11 armor. And it's up to Thane now. And I they shouldn't be able to do anything. Uh, I panic summoned a cat, so that's that's in the fight now. Um, but I'm just gonna jump Fane all the way in, and okay, we're set. This thing is dead. We're the the scarecrow's dead because what's going to happen now is I'm going to put shackles of pain onto this undead scarecrow. That's why I needed to break his physical armor. And uh, should I time warp? No, I don't. I don't think I need to time warp. I I can just I can just use adrenaline to make sure I have enough action points so living on the edge so that i don't die and with the shackles of pain on the scarecrow all i have to do is drink this massive potion boom it's gone because fane is undead so when i drink a potion it does damage to me and the shackles of pain passes the damage on and i crafted a couple of huge healing potions and i took the talent five star diner so that I would double it, even though that kind of wasn't necessary. I think he was at about 650 anyways, but whatever, he's dead. That was terrifying. I need to take a little break from fighting to calm down. I decided to do a little pickpocketing while I took a break, but the Driftwood shopkeepers had organized themselves in a nice little circle, and their sight lines were covering each other. So I just have to use my method for pickpocketing that can steal from anybody, anytime, no matter how many eyes are watching them. The easy way to do it is with a talent gained from the Divine Talents gift bag feature. But don't worry, if you aren't using it, I'll show you a way you can use this method without that talent as well. First, I'll respect to take the Master Thief talent, which makes it so that you're invisible while pickpocketing. Then, you can simply cast Chameleon Cloak, go into stealth while invisible, it doesn't matter where the enemy sightlines are, because you're invisible, and then you start pickpocketing. Now that you're pickpocketing, Master Thief will make it so that you stay invisible for the remainder of the pickpocket attempt, and when you're done, you can just walk away like it never happened. But if you aren't using the gift bag features, you can still pickpocket the NPCs in town, you just have to be a bit quicker with it. First, cast Smoke Cover by the NPC you'd like to pickpocket. Then, use Bless on the Smoke Cover and it'll turn it into Blessed Smoke. Make sure the Magisters don't see you do this because they'll freak out about you using Source Magic and they will attack you. But now that the Smoke is Blessed, it makes you turn invisible while inside it, so just run in, stealth, and quickly yeah, pick the mer merchant's pocket before your Blessed Smoke Cover runs out. And just like that, I can pickpocket any merchant at any time. Using this trick has allowed me to get nearly every skill book for all four of my characters without spending any gold. Blessing Smoke Clouds isn't just useful for pickpocketing though. It can be one of the most overpowered combat opening plays in the game, especially in fights where you get ambushed or where you're forced to start the fight with your whole party at the same time, such as the arena. The Driftwood Arena champion, Murga, is a jerk. She tells you that she'll only fight you in the arena if you defeat her acolytes while blindfolded and that significantly reduces our options of ways to fight. Luckily, I've been saving something special for this situation, but I'll need to survive round one without my characters getting killed or disabled. And for that, I'm going to have Fane cast Smoke Cover and bless it, making my entire party invisible. If we have to wear blindfolds and can't see them, it's only fair if they can't see us either, right? But I still have a problem on my hands. The blinded status effect reduces my accuracy and sight range, making it very difficult to fight. I'd like to create a nice safe space where my characters can hide out without fear of getting murdered. And that's why the Red Prince brought this death fog barrel with him. First, He's going to cast Mass Breathing Bubbles to give my party five turns of protection against clouds. Then I'm going to turn this corner of the battlefield into a nice safe haven for my characters. Okay, throw the Death Fog Barrel on the ground and then give it a smack. <laughs> That's actually really satisfying. I haven't used Death Fog before. I've played this game hundreds of hours and have literally never used Death Fog yet. That was nice. This archer is the only thing left that's a problem. Oh. <laughs> and they didn't have enough movement points. They didn't have enough action points to get to the high ground. They're standing right next to the death fog. That is beyond perfect. 
Yeah, they can't they can't get to the Red Prince. Okay, I'm just gonna send Losa over, and I should be able to just teleport this archer the rest of the way. Just give him the little nudge they need. Perfect, perfect. This is going so well. I can't believe this is working as well as I planned it to. Much better than the Scarecrow fight went. That fight was a disaster, but this one is going very well. I'm gonna move Losa up a little bit. She's still covered in the death fog. What's he doing? He's in the fog. He's... What is he? He's in the fog. How is he hitting? I can't see him because he's behind fog. Oh my goodness. Okay, Sabeel has first aid. We can get rid of the burning. We can get some health back. What is that though? He's standing in the death fog. He doesn't have a breathing bubble like we do. Oh, and now I've moved Sabeel out here. She's getting smacked. No. I had to say it. I had to go and say that this was going well. It's fine though. It's not it's not going to go poorly. There's only two of them left, but I don't know how he's not dead. He's standing in the fog. Whatever. I'm just you know what? I'm just gonna teleport him the rest of the way. What is happening? What he is in the fog. He is literally standing in fog. There's fog all around him. <laughs> Why? Oh, and I'm missing attacks because I have a blindfold on. Okay, I gotta hit it. Eh, that's another miss. Finally! Oh my goodness, that guy was just... Maybe he was holding his breath, you know? <laughs> maybe maybe he was just holding his breath. Whatever, I'm trying to finish off this chicken. I can't, I don't... Okay, just move slightly closer. Okay, thank goodness. Alright, I'll just finish off the chicken and... That should be the arena fight. That that went pretty well. That could have definitely gone a lot worse. I still think that guy was in the fog, but whatever. Let's go talk to Murga. It's fine. Come on. Show me I'm alive. That was a mistake because anything that's alive that is in death fog is no longer alive. Okay. Murga's dead and now this d deep dweller breaks out of his cage and we have to fight him but it really shouldn't be a problem as long as he doesn't one shot any of my characters shackles of pain is a little annoying but that's fine i can wait it out with invisibility okay okay this is pretty much this is pretty much done i'm almost positive he doesn't die in death fog but i'm gonna just teleport him in anyways because i want to make sure Okay, unless he's holding his breath like the other guy, he doesn't die to death fog. The rest of the fight was a breeze, no trouble at all, I didn't use any special techniques, literally just smacked the thing until it was gone. Arena fights are over. After winning in the Driftwood Arena, I traveled around for a while just taking out a few enemies here and there and a lot of smaller fights. It wasn't long before I found myself at the entrance to Wrecker's Cove. One of the first things you see in Wrecker's Cove is a Cold Crawler Voidwoken. I checked out its stats and saw that it was very weak to fire damage, but it has a lot of magical armor. These Voidwoken have dug into the ground and are preparing an ambush for me, but it turns out that I have an ambush set up for them instead. Fane's job in this fight is to survive the first two rounds, and to group up all the enemies in one place. The rest of the party is going to incinerate the bugs before they get a chance to fight back. I sent Fane in alone to get the bugs to reveal themselves, but unfortunately only one of the bugs shows up. That's because in this fight, the bugs only show up to ambush their intended prey, so it's one Voidwoken per character. This Voidwoken has enough damage to kill me in one hit, but unfortunately for him, he won't be able to hit me at all. That's because I'm going to use Icy Skin, which makes me completely immune to water damage and freezing, and I'm also using Uncanny Evasion to increase my dodge chance. As you can see, my enemy's chance to hit me is now 0%, which is due to the 90% evasion I'm gaining from Uncanny Evasion and an extra 10% dodge from the talent Parry Master, which works if you're dual wielding. And as you can clearly see, I have a shank in each hand. The Voidwoken attempts to cast a spell on me, which does nothing, and then he walks over and makes whatever that noise would sound like before ending its turn. It clearly knows there's absolutely no way for it to damage me right now, so I just go ahead and delay my turn and force the creature to waste a second turn, and now the combat area is prepped for my party to enter the battlefield. I put my characters into stealth, but decided I wanted to look like rocks, you know, team spirit, and so I had my characters stand over the stony terrain when entering stealth so we could all dress for success. Since the enemies will only show themselves when my characters enter the fight, I needed my characters to all enter combat at the exact same moment, so their turns will all be back to back. 
That'll be up to Fane to handle. Once everyone was in position, Fane brought them all into combat at the exact same time by throwing a firestorm grenade at them. And this is really the perfect way to enter combat because all three of my party members are using the elemental affinity talent, which makes their fire spells cost one less action point if they're standing in fire when they cast it. Plus, it brings them all into combat at exactly the same time. And in response to them entering combat, the rest of the Void Woken burst out of the ground, but since they're joining combat just a moment later than my characters did, we all get to take our turns first. Now it's a simple matter of grouping the enemies up with teleportation and nether swap. With all the bugs in one spot, it's time to roast them up. Alright, so I gave all my characters flaming skin so they can be immune to fire damage. It's really just to protect them from each other. I don't think I'm going to need to hit any of my own characters with fire spells, but I just didn't want to have to have to risk it or anything so shoot the death razor through death razor death laser shoot the fireball down and that's pretty good damage i'll use adrenaline and then get the rest of my action points used up and try and weaken these front two i think would be the way to do it yeah yeah i'll go for this first one and last action point well last spell that i can use for, with one action point. Uh, I'll just slap Encourage down on my hotbar and use that. Give the rest of my team a little bit of extra stats. Alright, Red Prince is up next. And same thing, I'm just going to throw Flaming Skin on so that uh, he's resistant to fire damage just in case I need to hit him for some reason. And there's the Death Laser Fireball on all four. And same old thing fire whip spontaneous combustion oh you know what uh no i'll use spontaneous combustion and then uh the red prince has his dragon's breath that he can use for that last action point so that's actually pretty handy and it's up to sabil to finish them off okay it's called laser ray not whatever else i've been saying the rest of this time but there go the first two the front two are down and sabil's my favorite because she gets one bonus action point from flesh sacrifice so so I'm gonna, I think I can walk her up close and maybe I can go for a supernova. Definitely need to use adrenaline, but I need to be a little closer for supernova, but this should, this should do it. And I still have an action point left to take out the, oh no, that's it. They're done. That was, that was great. That went so smoothly. That, that was the smoothest fight we've had so far today. And that looks delicious. We're definitely having barbecue bugs for dinner tonight. The final fight in this video is going to be against Mortis. My main goal for this fight is simple. I want Mortis to stop moving somewhere in this area and Sabeel will take it from there. To increase the chances of getting Mortis to stop where I want him to, I decided to cover all the ground in this area with webbing by using the spider legs polymorph ability. I just used spin web over and over again until I had covered the entire area with webs. Once everything was covered in webs, I sent Fane to chat with Mortis and get the fight started. I used spider legs at the fight start to make sure Fane wouldn't get caught in the webs while he retreated to the holdout position. Uh, unfortunately, I walked a little bit too far away from the fight and had to start it over, but the end result was the same. The fight was started and my character was just a little bit far enough away that he hopefully isn't in too much danger. Most of the enemies had a hard time approaching because as soon as they walked a few steps into the web, they would just get entangled and couldn't move anymore. The enemies with wings could unfortunately move over the web with no problems, so I had Sabeel waiting far away in high ground to take one of them out. And this is what got the fight started for real. You see, Mortis is a fairly regular enemy until you kill one of his allies. As soon as one of them dies, Mortis uses an ability to consume them and turn into a massive, horrific monster. Well, he absolutely slaughters Fane. But it probably won't surprise you to hear that Fane, the character I would use primarily as bait when initiating fights, is carrying an idol of rebirth. So he comes back to life immediately. Thankfully, Mortis tries to walk on the webs and gets stuck in exactly the spot I wanted him to be. But before Fane's next turn, he gets slaughtered again. Probably won't surprise you to hear that Fane, the character I use as bait, was carrying a second idol of rebirth. Yeah, I know, it's a broken item, but everything else I'm doing in this game is broken too, so if you manage to get to this point in the video, you should have seen this coming. The final enemy takes about one step 
before getting in webbed again and losing the rest of her final turn. I say final turn because the fight is completely over now. I've won. As you can see, Mortis has 4,746 health. You already know that I can't use this trapdoor to get infinite turns because that would be the same method that I used on the Lady Vengeance, and no two fights can be the same. The reason this fight is over is because Sabeel is in combat when she stands here, but she's not in combat when she stands here. That's because right here is too far away from the fight for Sabeel to be considered a part of it. Unfortunately for Mortis, Sabeel has enough range to shoot him from here, even if she can't officially join the fight. Every time Sabeel hits her target, she gets instantly removed from the fight and can move freely again, meaning I can shoot Mortis an infinite number of times. I put Fane below deck and had Losa stand in his place. I have no idea why, I just did it. Uh, but after hitting Mortis with a couple different abilities and was kind of just, just having fun with it and seeing what I could do, um, I got him down to about 2,000 health and stopped messing around and started killing Mortis for real. By the way, I have one bonus kill and kind of silly scene for you at the end of this video, so uh, make sure that you stick around for that. Uh, it's not going to be too much longer now because Mortis is getting destroyed. Alright, time for the killing blow. And just like that, we took Mortis down in one turn. Thank you so much for watching, and here is the bonus silly scene that I promised. I'll see you next time. Does anybody else hate this guy? Because I hate this guy, and I feel like other people probably do too, and I'm gonna take care of it. Not in any mood to talk about it. Why are we still here? Oh my gosh, even death couldn't stop this guy from spreading the news. He is very committed to his job. Uh, uh oh, here come the fuzz. Time to make a getaway. Let's go. Alright, I just gotta find somewhere to hide out and lay low outside of town, and. Perfect.